Hello everybody, I'm Paul Beckwith and I'm going to look at uh, what happened to cause this tremendous marine heat wave in 2023. So basically uh, the heat in the entire, almost the entire North Atlantic basin um, reached uh, record high sea surface temperatures and James Hansen has published work showing that, you know, of course, these are major shipping routes for the Earth's commercial shipping and the International Maritime Organization reduced sulfur in shipping fuels. So with less sulfur, there's less um, aerosols coming out of the smokestacks of these ships. And with fewer aerosols, there's fewer cloud condensation nuclei, so fewer low-lying clouds over the ocean waters therefore more sunlight reaching the surface of the water, heating it. But there's another major factor that's involved, according to this new paper that just came out, and that is a great reduction of the winds over the ocean surface. So wind speeds reached record low levels in many cases for the summer of 2023 over the North Atlantic. And the wind is very important for mixing the water specifically mixing the surface layers with water deeper down that's cooler. So without that mixing with this so-called shoaling or shallowing of the uh, surface layer of the ocean, that water could, uh, could reach much, much higher temperatures. And then with higher temperatures, the water density, of course, is lower. So you get more stratification and it's a self-perpetuating cycle. So this new paper just came out looking at all these factors and um, I'm just going to quickly uh, discuss it here. So let's start at the beginning. Okay, so this is the uh, paper here. Um, it was published online June 4th, 2025, just a few days ago. The title is Drivers of the Extreme North Atlantic Marine Heat Wave During 2023. So, uh, what's going on? Great. What is going on here? Okay, here we go. I don't know. Glitch. Okay, so North Atlantic ocean circulation and temperature patterns, of course, they profoundly influence the global and regional climate across all time scales and it talks about basically from the present synoptic to should say yearly to seasonal well to seasonal it should say to yearly it jumps to decadal multi-decadal and beyond so we had an extreme and near full basin scale marine heat waves so over a vast area of the northern hemisphere in the atlantic ocean and it peaked in july the warming was across virtually all regions of the North Atlantic, including the subpolar ocean region, the region south of Greenland, where we see the cooling trend over the past century. And that's linked to a slowdown in the AMOC in the meridional overturning circulation or Atlantic meridional overturning circulation. So we don't know for sure all of the mechanisms that led to this exceptional sea sea surface ocean warming, uh, but there are a number of factors that come into play, including, as I've already mentioned, the sulfur that James Hansen's talked about, but also they've looked at the observations, they've looked at the climate re reanalysis, the direct ocean observations, the computer models, and uh, basically the there was an extremely shallow surface mixed layer. So the mixed layer is where, you know, the water mixes uh, with other water in the it, throughout the water column. So it didn't go down very deep to colder water. It was just, the water was just mixing on the surface layer. So when it heated up, the heat just stayed there, warming the ocean water, making it less dense, making it more stratified, further reducing the mixing with deeper, cooler water. Um, the heat, it wasn't anomalous ocean heat transport. It wasn't ocean currents from outside this basin bringing heat in. The dominant driver is 
really, really low, anomalously low, weak winds over the surface. So there was strong shoaling or shallowing of the mixed layers. So there was a rapid temperature rise in the shallow surface layer of the North Atlantic. And also many of these regions correspond to the main shipping lanes. So reduced sulfate emissions in the shipping fuels, it says could also have played a localized role. So they're still hedging their bets a little bit on what Hansen's saying. Um, they do say that there's been trends in the last recent decade to shallower mixed layers, and that will continue in the future. So the severity of North Atlantic marine heat waves is set to worsen. And this is, of course, a problem to the marine ecosystems. It's a problem to the, to people, because if you look, um, you know, very, very warm weather over North America, and it was quite dry and hot, and that heat carried out over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, the, I've already mentioned that the winds were greatly weakened, and we got anomalous heat waves. So then when that, those conditions carried over, carried by the westerly winds from the west to east, the general flow patterns in the northern hemisphere, um, it carried it, it basically brought heat waves to Europe. There was a lot of evaporation of ocean water, which meant that the air was very humid that, that went over to Europe. So there were lots of extreme weather events, lots of storms included in the heat waves. And there were also moments of torrential rain, et cetera, in Europe. So very disturbed weather in Europe as a result of this marine heat wave in the Atlantic basin. So the 2023 summertime mar marine heat wave in the North Atlantic, it was associated with extreme heat waves over large areas of Europe, particularly during July. It was so large in magnitude that it was a substantial contributor to record global mean temperatures that developed that year. So you remember that was a year of huge temperatures and the earth energy imbalance reached 1.8 watts per square meter, which was three times higher than the 2001 to 2014 average, as I pointed out in previous video, videos, previous couple of videos. There was also severe storms and flooding rains across parts of Europe during June through September, exacerbated by increased evaporation and higher atmospheric mo moisture content upstream, so downwind, over the hotter than average North Atlantic. Okay, so total rainfall in places like the UK and many regions of Europe were in the top 10 to 20% compared to the 1991 to 2020 climatological average. So lots of ecosystem damage, um, lots of severe heat waves and flooding rains in Europe. So we need to understand what happened in the Atlantic ocean um, in 2023 to understand what's going on. Okay, so let's have a look at the data. Okay, so this graph says it all. This is the North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly for 2023 is the red line. So 1981 to 2022 years are all indicated in these blue lines and you can see this envelope of curves um, as you go to lighter and lighter blue, you get closer to the present. And then bang, we had 2023, where we were in record high territory for much of the year. Very, very warm year. This was the North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly. It, it surpassed, you know, 1.2 degrees Celsius, which is huge. It takes an awful lot of energy to warm the oceans due to the very high density compared to the atmosphere. This is the European... Um, um, model. The, the European um, reanalysis is the black line, and then the uh, Japan uh, data is the gray line. So they're all showing, you know, they're, they're very close to what we observed in, in 2023. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, this is another plot dividing the 2023 heat um, in terms of the heating in the eastern part of the North Atlantic 
versus the western part of the North Atlantic. So interestingly, the eastern part heated up first, and then that was followed later by the western part, giving you the overall red curve here. And now let's have a look at the actual maps of this region. So this was sea surface temperature anomaly up to 2.4 degrees Celsius above the norm in the darkest red areas. So this is in May, you can see the warming here and this spreads northward and uh, heading towards the west to cover this in June. And then it shifted. It seemed like um, this part was still around for, for July and August, this warming, but this thing kind of shifted over and, and we had this huge warming over here in the western part of the basin in July and August. So it shifted fairly quickly. It almost looks like this whole thing kind of shifted over. Um, and if you look at the wind speeds during that time period, the wind anomalies reached near record lows. Um, and the outline here is showing where the heat was. So that's, that outlines where the, where, the, where the heat was for the respective months. And this, these sort of little dash marks show that the heat is within this area. The heat is within this area. And uh, you can see the wind speeds here, um, the wind anomaly. So the blue is lower than normal and we got much, it's mostly blue here, very, very low wind speeds um, through the summer months in 2023. And again, this wind speed resulted in less mixing of the surface layer. So all that heat could be trapped in, in a thin layer that um, thin mixed layer of the ocean uh, leading to these very, very high temperatures. And then the downwind effects to, uh, you know, west to east, trade wind, the, the westerlies in the northern hemisphere meant that the, these regions here bore the brunt of extreme weather, you know, in Europe from, from these huge, this huge marine heat wave. And you can look at the um, this is a mixed layer depth, or in other words, it's the, uh, it, this is standard deviation. So it's just from the mean. So up, up one standard deviation two, you know, two and a half, approaching two and a half standard deviations. Um, and uh, higher than normal mixed layer depth would be the red, less than normal would be the blue. And you can see we've got mostly blue in this region. So the mixed layer depth is very, very shallow. It's, uh, you know, one to two, stand, two and a half standard deviations below the normal because of that um, greatly reduced thickness of the layer in which the warm water from the surface mixes with cooler water from below, the whole mixed layer could warm up significantly. So this is the key factor um, for causing these sort of marine heat waves. This is the normalized um, mixed layer depth in 2023, and it compares it to the other years, 1981 to 2022, uh, standard deviations from the mean. And you can see we're, we're along the record low level throughout the whole year, essentially, almost throughout the whole year. It tapers up here in November, but it's, it's really, really low. So the volume of water heating up is lower. It's not, we're not getting the mixing with cooler water from below. So the surface temperatures go, go crazy warm. And, uh, you know, they looked at, um, th th they looked at the mixed layer temperature, the tendency and surface fluxes and advection, which is horizontal movement uh, caused by winds, etc. So very, so, so much lower advection or, or mixing in the horizontal direction with these lower wind speeds, much shallower depths. So we got tremendous amounts of heating. The, the, surf, the, the flux, the, the energy balance at the surface meant that uh, there was tremendous amounts of heat going into the water, um, greatly warming the uh, temperatures in the mixed layer. Okay, um, and they, they looked at the sort of budget here for mixed layer depth and the different heat amounts and so on, you know, and what happened throughout the month in terms of these 
these, these factors, breaking it up into long waves, short radiation, sensible heat flux, latent heat flux, etc. So this is kind of the, this is a good image here because when you get average wind speeds, you get uh, mixing, and this is the uh, mixed layer depth. So there was a shallow mixed layer depth that was preconditioned by long-term warming trends. So overall warming of the water in this basin from, you know, from year to year means that the mixed layer depth is already fairly shallow, but then the wind speeds dropped off to near record level, low levels. And that meant there was less wind on the surface. So there was even less mixing. So this layer warmed up and we had record shallow mixed layer depths into June, even, even more, you know, even, even lower uh, record shallow mixed layer depths into July. And therefore we had record warm sea surface temperatures um, very low wind speeds. There was very little, uh, very few uh, clouds up in the sky above. Um, the lack of clouds meant that the solar radiation could just come right down and heat up this warm, this, this layer of water. And as it heated up, the density decreased. So it floated on top of the other water. So it, it even, it, 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 so the mixing was even more reduced. It was a feedback process. And then uh, the winds did pick up a little bit into August. So the, 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 um, the mixed layer depth increased slightly. Okay, so this is basically what happened. They talk about the, um, the reduced shipping emissions and how that probably contributed to it. Although they argue that the, the, the drop of the wind speeds was the key factor um, in resulting in this huge warming anomaly. You know, and again, these are the wind speeds, you know, one standard de de deviation below is like the light bluish colors and the dark blue, the darkest blue are two and a half standard deviations below normal for the wind speeds. So the anomalies of the wind speeds were, were uh, into record territory um, and as I showed you in this diagram down here, um, it meant that, uh, where are we down here? It meant that we got very, very shallow mixing layers. So without the water mixing, the water in this layer would, um, greatly warm up and that heat would not be dissipated to other regions. So it was, it was shown, sh it showed up in, in record high, uh, sea surface temperatures. Okay, so, uh, you know, leading to the top curve here, which, you know, these are the sea surface temperature anomalies. So huge sea surface temperature anomalies, much warmer than normal, up to 2.4 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal in these regions here of the darkest red. Um, and uh, therefore, this is a sort of curve for North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly. And we had record high air temperatures that year. Um, and... The earth energy imbalance was record high levels, three times faster than the, the 2001 to 2014 or 2015 average, which was 0.6 watts per square meter. We had 1.8 watts per square meter this year, as I've shown you from previous videos. So all that heat is trapped, you know, heats up the earth system, heats up the land, heats up the atmosphere, heats up the oceans, and we can see this tremendous warming anomaly. So. So that's where we're at right now. And, uh, you know, as we move forward, I think we're going to continue to get ex more and more accelerated warming. Um, and that's going to lead probably to very high risks of, of global food shortages, for example. So I want to thank you for listening. Uh, please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos. And, you know, if you want to get, uh, you know, climate t-shirt, uh, you know the place to go. All the links for everything I've discussed are in, are in the description of this video. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.